I, I love that video. I had a video, but mine wasn't as cool, so I didn't bring it. The, um, I had a boasting wall, too, but I had to take it down because it started to look bad for me. Um, I did. I replaced it with uh, traditional pictures of the tribe. Um, I want to thank everybody for the opportunity to be here. You know, we've, we've won a couple before, but every time it, it, it feels great to sort of get acknowledgement for some of the work we're doing, and I appreciate the opportunity. It's like I said last night, it's like a seal of, uh, of approval, right? And um, we've got some slides. This is, we're here for the Ho-Chunk Village. I run a company called Ho-Chunk Inc., which is the tribe's development corporation. So why am I here talking about a village? Um, you know, we were doing very well as a company, and we continue to do well. But if you're going to make an impact in a community, you have to go beyond um, just creating an economy or jobs. Uh, we had plenty of jobs, but we had a lot of problems. And um, when I was younger, I didn't think in those terms. I just said, let's just fight the poverty with a job, and things will get better. But our problems are, it's like Facebook, right? They're complicated. You know, we had housing issues, we had education issues, we had, to, we had pride, we had self-esteem, we had drug and alcohol problems. And just creating a job to somebody who's in no position to do it or has, doesn't have a place to live really wasn't going to solve the problem. And so we decided to take a bigger approach. Um, I worked for Famous Dave for a little while. He got me to go to the BIA and then left me there. And then, uh, but one of the things he said that I remember, he said a lot of things, but um, he said, Indians don't think big enough. Right? And I'm like, hey, I, I could think big. And so at the time, we were going to build like a strip mall. It was maybe some vague notion of houses on this land that we had acquired. And we decided that maybe we should think a little bit bigger. And we decided to build you know, our own little town, our community. And we couldn't do it alone. We, Ho Chunk Inc. is one part of the equation. We formed a nonprofit corporation called the Ho Chunk Community Development Corporation. They've raised $43 million to help make this happen. It was very helpful. They run a down payment assistance program, and they won a community development program uh, uh, where we actually won the Harvard Award for the Ho Chunk Community Development Fund, which provides matching grants. I actually got the idea for that sitting in an, uh, the audience and on, at the second, at the second uh, annual uh, award for the Harvard Honoring Nations program from another person. I took that idea and morphed it into something for our own. So maybe some good will come out of this today for you guys too. Um, also, our, we give the tribe 20% of our profits as a dividend, and the tribe has let us traditionally for the last six or seven years use a portion of that to put back into this community to build homes and to, and to make our community a better place. So the tribe, the nonprofit, and Ho-Chunk work together to make this happen. And you can see from the picture here, you know, you're talking about a fairly densely packed community. We wanted, we had so many needs for housing, nobody wanted to be in our town because our community wasn't attractive. Everybody wanted to live out in, in the outskirts, in the woods, but we were never going to be able to solve our housing problems. We had 30 kids graduating from the high school year, and we had enough money to put in the infrastructure for three houses a year. So we had to create some density, and we had to make it attractive to, to make it happen. Um, let's go to the next slide. Um, this, this slide really focuses in on housing. My assistants and her children are in the picture there. The, um, and what you see is a variety of houses. We sort of went, you don't know me, but I get a little obsessive. When we decided to build this town, we bought a housing manufacturing company, a small publicly traded company we took over. We bought an interest in a bank, two of them now, to, so we could get loans. We were tired of asking. Um, we uh, started a used car company to fix people's credit because it was, it was a bad situation. We raised the money from grants to build the housing lots, and we started, now we just give them away. And so, what you're, what, and people had jobs, but they didn't have any money. They didn't have any savings, right? We had incomes, but no savings, because if you had any, I don't know about your res, but you know, no one's saving much money in our world, especially when you're f coming, coming off of poverty. And um, so we started a down payment assistance program, and it gradually went from 3,000, and it's for any income, and we're not a rich tribe, and it slowly went up to 65,000 a year, and at one point was 80,000 a year with some grant money combined. So the tribe w allowed us to use some of our dividend to give, we they started off at a million dollars, the next 20 people, $50,000 uh, for their down payment assistance. Because we had a real issue in a rural America and on the reservation, there's no housing market. And, and then the reservation next to us, you can buy a house for $10,000, $20,000.
And so there's no way you're gonna get a mortgage for $200,000. You're gonna need a down payment of $100,000 to even get something close. And so we were, we were able to slowly attack all of these problems. And now uh, I'm looking at some of these houses, they're right around $100,000, but they cost a couple hundred thousand to build. Um, we build them at cost, we give away the lots, we arrange the loans, and we give the down payment assistance. The average person saves somewhere around $100,000. We don't have to come up with the rest of the money, the banking system does. Also, these, this town is not in trust, which shocks a lot of people. Um, it's up to them to put it in trust. Um, no one has, interestingly, nobody has chose to put their own home in trust because they don't want to lose the, they don't want to lose control of it. Um, I just think that's a, a, a side issue. Um, but what you're seeing here, and every one of these housing units, whether the apartments, was built in our factory, and so we had sort of a control over quality and. Um, and design and gave people a real upgrade, I think, in terms of, of what we're doing. And garages, that's our big thing, right? Nobody had garages and HUD houses. <laughs> Next one. <laughs> Sorry. Well, well, there's a, yeah. <laughs> what, what's bad about it, what's bad about it is somebody said, you better put a garage door opener or somebody trying to move in. <laughs> <You know? laughs> we had a little bit of that going on. Um, this, is, this is a bigger picture of what it looks like. And I wish I had a newer drone picture because we've built um, um, uh, a large apartment building and we're building something called a live work building where there's offices on the first floor and, uh, and apartments on the second floor right in the corner. But you can see here uh, what, it, what it looks like and it's taken quite a long time to put this together. Um, and to give you an example how we work, the middle building, the Woodland Trails, we got a grants for free. The two buildings on the right, um, we got, it was, they're about 3.2 million to build. We got grants for 2.2 million of it and then we got a BIA loan for the rest, and then we built it, made some money on the construction, so we're net into that project for maybe $700,000. So it, it allows the company to get a good deal, because they save, they save on it, and, it, and it allows the individual apartments to be rented at a lower rate. Something we do that I forgot to mention was we, we don't just rent them at market rate, we rent our, our, our housing units all way below market. You know, Ho-Chunk is an aggressive, successful company, but on reservation, we're a different animal. We use our corporate capital to invest at a very low rate. So we have elders housing, we have student housing, we have young people housing, um, we have professional housing, we have low income housing, and we have home ownership. Um, I think the, the other two buildings, those have cigarettes in them, we couldn't get any grants for those, unfortunately. <laughs> the next slide. This gives you another sort of sense of what we're doing. One of the primary reasons we did this was to make this an active community. Diabetes is a killer in our world, everyone knows that. And we wanted to create an environment where kids can play, they can walk around. You didn't have to go to the gym, you could just walk to the store. Our elder units are on the flat part of a hill because we had elder units on the high end of a, in, in town on a hill and it might as well have been a prison for them. And so we've done what we can to create an environment with sidewalks, with trees, with uh, a safe place for kids to play, for people to walk around in so that we can fight the health issues. We've also, we've also connected our community to the rest of this, the disparate parts of our town with uh, trails to make it great. I think that um, I'm out of time, but this, I'll leave you with a thought. This was hard work. It, it was much harder than I thought. We didn't have all the pieces of it when we put together, we were very naive. We solved each of these problems one at a time, and the net result is something we're very proud of. And not only are we proud of it, our, when your people have pride and they're, and they're proud of their home and you create home ownership, you change the whole community. You change the schools, you change the attitude towards everybody, and what we've done we're so proud of it, and we're shocked by the success of this, and we think that um, it's gonna be great in the future. We're trying to buy the 40 acres next to it so we can expand it for the next 10 years. Thank you very much.